Facebook stock, FB stock, meta platform stock, whatever you want to call this stock, meta, some people call it for short, this company is undervalued. It's been undervalued for a long, long time. And yet the market, the market just doesn't realize it. Today was fairly good, up around, I believe, 2.07%. So a fairly good day for the company. But if we zoom out, five day returns are painful. Five day returns just hovering around 0.08% negative. One month returns still down, still down 0.75%. But the past six months, the past six months is where the real pain becomes evident. Down 38.74%. And year to date, year to date, still down 42.48%. So, with the obvious degree of pain being felt by the stock, the obvious degree of criticism around this company every single day, with Sandberg now removing herself from the company, citing burnout after 14 years at Facebook. What is my opinion on the company? What is my approach to the business? Well, my approach, my approach quite frankly hasn't changed. On a fundamental level, in relation to all the underlying characteristics of this company, despite the hate, despite the doubt in the marketplace, despite the fear proliferating around this company, the consistent declines day over day, month over month, week over week, the underlying nature of this company, it hasn't changed. There is still a tremendous degree of underlying fundamental strength. There is still a tremendous degree of profitability and relative to the current trading price, a massive degree of undervaluation. Today, I want to show you why. When it comes to underlying financial stability, this company is almost unmatched. A cash to debt ratio of 3.12, indicating a tremendous degree of financial stability and certainty exuded by this business. If Facebook so desired, they could instantaneously pay off all the debt obligations three times over, and still have cash on hand to reinvest and build out their business going forward. Combine that with healthy equity to assets. Combine that with healthy debt to equity, debt to EBITDA, interest coverage, all these numbers, all these financial stability metrics are simply world class. And they tell the story, the story we've known for quite a long time, that when it comes to financial stability, financial certainty, Facebook's simply world class. Combine that with the free cash flow constantly flowing into this company. Think about the ads business. What are the marginal costs associated with running an ad on Facebook's platform? Virtually zero. Once the platform is established, once they have the staff in place, the servers in place, there's virtually no marginal cost. And that is exuded in their profitability, which we'll get onto later. But that also creates a lot of free cash flow. And what free cash flow generates for Facebook is financial stability, financial certainty. And in the face of recession, the recession we're potentially entering into over the next 12 to 24 months, this is exactly what we need. Cash on hand to provide financial stability during the storm. And that free cash flow to allow the company to be opportunistic, to buy up discounted, depressed companies during that recessionary period. That's the power Facebook has, not only in a defensive fashion, but also in an offensive fashion, being able to buy up depressed companies during a recessionary period. This company, it's an extremely advantageous position. And that's reflected in the Altman score, an Altman score of 10.04, indicating a tremendous degree of underlying safety and stability with this company. The chances of Facebook going away, Facebook going away with the next two, three years, Virtually zero. And that's despite the hate and the speculation you might see around the company. People saying that only old people use Facebook. Only old people are on the platform. There's no profitability anymore. Well, if you actually look at the numbers, if you look at the reality of the company, that's not the story you get. Financial stability is very much present within this organization. You combine it with profitability, with net margins extremely high. At 31.2%, every dollar of revenue that comes in, 31% of that is pure profit. It's easy to see. This is still a classy organization. Operating margins of 36.68%. Gross margins of 80.34% on an industry basis. Simply fantastic. You may say, well, historically, based upon the historical averages of Facebook, these margins aren't actually that good. Net margins of 31.2% actually fall below or only slightly above the median over the past decade of 29.77%. And they're well below the max over the past decade of around 39.6%. But think about it. We've been seeing companies across the board seeing small margin declines. We've seen Google have margin declines of around 2%. Microsoft margin declines again of around 2%. Facebook's margins degrading in this inflationary environment combined with the individual struggles this company is facing, the privacy changes within the new iOS. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised margins have declined a little. In fact, I'm a little impressed that they've actually been able to maintain margins in excess of 30% despite the challenges they're facing, despite the pain associated with this company, they are still 
very, very profitable. It's reflected in operating margins, it's reflected in gross margins, and more so than anything, it is reflected in their returns on equity, the measure of the managerial competency within the business. Still, extraordinarily high. Returns on equity of 28.57%. On an industry basis, these are some of the best returns on equity across the interactive media space, and also, historically, are almost at the very peak of what they have ever achieved, indicating the tremendous degree of managerial competency and long-term vision within this company. Clearly, capital is being allocated with a long-term lens, focusing on the next 10, 15, 20 years in terms of their capital outlay, rather than just trying to puff the numbers quarter over quarter. That is the type of managerial competency you want within a long-term investment. Also, returns on assets. Returns on assets, exceptionally impressive at 22.39% on an industry basis. On a historical basis, both, again, are very, very impressive. And you may say, Facebook's a big company, a $516 billion company. So how in the world does it maintain returns on assets of around 22.39%? Well, the answer, the answer is a low capital cost business model. Naturally, with Facebook, as I mentioned before, think about it. What are the marginal costs associated with each ad run by Facebook? Once their servers are in place, once their platforms are established, and also their staffing costs are covered, what marginal costs are there? The answer is virtually zero. And that's reflected in returns on assets. That's how returns on assets are so high, even at this massive scale. It's how gross margins stand around 80.34%, despite being over a $500 billion company. This... This is the magic of Facebook. This is the magic of their profitability, the quality of their underlying business. And yes, you may have your issues with the management. You may say Zuckerberg uh, should be out of the way. Zuckerberg needs to leave before the company can really succeed. But based on how the company's performing now, how it's enduring this difficult time period under his leadership, I can't really complain. I think the company's doing exceptionally well given the hand it's been played. I think I'm actually fairly impressed by the underlying fundamentals of Facebook. So profitability is there. Undoubtedly, manager your competency based upon those returns on equity and also a tremendous degree of underlying financial stability. So, what about the valuation? We know that Facebook has been taking a dive recently, a big, big hit year to date, down over 42.48%. So, despite the continued leveling out of the company, just continuing to flatline over the past month or so, is there still a buying opportunity present? Is it still a chance to get into this company relative to the market more broadly? Well, when I show you the P.E. ratio, when I show you the P.E. ratio relative to the growth taking place within this company over the past 10 years, 5 years, even 3 years, I think it becomes pretty obvious that there is a very advantageous buying opportunity present. Let me show you. If we break it down, a current P.E. ratio of 14.43 forward P.E. of 17.43. Historically, this is one of the single lowest P.E. ratios the company has ever been assigned and also on an industry basis, very, very low. So... You may say, well, you know, Lockie, the P-E ratio isn't the be-all, end-all of investing. The P-E ratio doesn't tell you everything you need to know about a company. And you're right. You're absolutely right. The P-E ratio doesn't tell you everything you need to know about valuation. What it tells you is how much growth predication is priced into the stock going forward. How much do investors and how much do the broader market believe this company can continue to grow and compound over time? Well, let me show you something. That P-E ratio, that P-E ratio of 14.43, that's only pricing in around 8 to 9% growth going forward over the next decade. That is despite the fact that Facebook has grown consistently on an earnings per share basis at 22.1% over the past three years, a three year EBITDA growth rate of 24.1%, and a three year revenue growth rate of 29.2%, three year free cash flow growth of 37%, all growth rates well in excess of the growth being priced in this company going forward. And you may argue, yes, that. Listen, we're looking at a growth slowdown on Facebook. Management is pricing at around 15-17% growth going forward over the next 12 months. Well, even with that more conservative growth rate, even with those conservative growth rates posted by management, you know, I believe that that's still substantially undervalued. In fact, on the day, even after the uptick today of around 2%, I believe up 2% on the day, up 2.07%, based upon that current trading price on the day, all you need to price in, in terms of tangible growth going forward is a growth rate of 6.19%. You priced it in today. Growth of 6.19% going forward over the next decade. Discount rate of 9% current earnings per share figure of $13.22 a share. That's the reality. That's the opportunity present within this company. It's absolutely astonishing. This is evidently 
a massive undervaluation opportunity. You only need a price in 6% growth to get fair value. This is despite the fact that this company has been growing at 68% over the past decade, 27.8% over the past five years, a so one-year growth rate of 13.1%. Tremendous growth taking place within this organization. And yet, growth rate only needs to be priced in around 6.19%. That is textbook undervaluation. Now, you may say, well, you know, 6% seems a little conservative, way conservative relative to what has been achieved by the company. What if we get more aggressive? What if we get more reasonable with our growth assumptions going forward? What if we price in growth instead of around, let's say, be reasonable, 15%. 15% is substantially lower than the 10-year, 5-year, and just slightly higher than the 1-year growth rate of 13.1%. So, 15% growth going forward over the next decade, discount rate of 9% current earnings per share figure of $13.22 a share. Look at that fair value. Fair value of $355 and 71 cents a margin of safety of 45.39 percent massive upside potential provided by this organization that that's the reality of facebook that's the reality that's been present for a long long time and yet the market the market's got bored of it the market has got disinterested with the company continuing to flatline over the past few months so what do i say i say when other people are doubtful when other people are fearful when they're moving away from the stock use that opportunity investigate the business yourself, look at the underlying fundamentals, look at that valuation relative to the current trading price, which is substantially lower. Conduct your own research before you make any moves in the marketplace. But if you enjoyed this video, if you have to learn something more about my current thoughts on Facebook relative to the market more broadly, then please drop us a like down below, hit subscribe if you haven't already. If there's a company or topic you want me to talk about in the next video, then please just comment down below. We'd love to hear your thoughts. But until then, thank you. I'll see you in the next one.